What's going on, everybody? Judd Burton here with Asphalt Kingdom, and I'm super, super excited to be here with Mr. Matt Stanley. I've had the opportunity to meet him a bunch of times, National Pavement Expo, um, actually, I think two or three times the National Pavement Expo, and I've, I've just watched watch the company that, that you guys, you guys have, you know, been building that dad started way back when American pavement and man, we've had, we've had the privilege to be able to jam with you guys. And I've watched an enormous of things, enormous number of things happen in the last year and a bit. And uh, welcome, man. Thank you for being here. Thank you, John. Thank you for having me. And I'm looking forward to see you at another trade show soon. Hopefully we can get those rocking next year. Right. I can't wait, man. It's, it's super exciting. It, it was interesting, you know, the last last trade show we were at the uh, the expo, it was right before COVID smashed us. <laughs> you know, it's funny, I, Con Expo, which was like in March, I think we got out of there like the day before shit really popped off, like literally the day before. It was crazy. I remember, I remember that. We, we were all in... Uh, we were at Kid Rock and we were, we were all over, man, in, in Nashville and just jammed. I honestly think I might have had COVID on the way back home, to right. be honest. My son. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. But Crazy. Here we are. Here we are, man, already in May. It's, it's, it's incredible to see jamming. How are things on your guys end? You guys just rocking, right? Yeah. Um, so we've been at it. Um, we, we actually started in, I want to say mid-March. We did a, a job early March. Um, anytime before April 1st is an early start for us. So we were able to start mid-March because of the weather. Um, so we got like a good two and a half months in and, and we're starting to have like some good momentum, you know, um, the beginning of the season is always a little choppy. Right. Um, but I mean, we're, we're a good two months in and we, we got some good momentum. So things are well. I'm watching, I'm watching your social media pop brother. You're wearing a raised on black top hat. I mean, your guys' social media game, just to back up your social media game at American Pavement, who's the one that handles all of the social media at American Pavement? So, I don't want to take all the credit, but I do a lot of it. I do probably 90% of it. Um, my brother's all, we're all logged into the American Pavement account. And, and that's what's cool on the day-to-day -day when we post stories. My brother could be 30 miles away with his crew and he could be posting on the story. And then I can be with my crew posting on the story, but... Like a lot of the day-to-day -day posts, it, it's me. It's a lot of work. It's definitely a lot of work. It's time consuming. And American Pavement, fa family owned, family run. And I'm sure all the, the people that have joined you, the staff are considered family too, as they, yeah. as they come to the company. And, you know, we were just speaking earlier and prior to hitting record here, and we were speaking a little bit about standard operating procedures. And we were speaking about, you know, processes and these kind of things and and you you mentioned something pretty interesting with with how you guys you know have the team and how you guys operate i'd love you to share that with everybody before we start chatting about raised on blacktop like you know some companies have sops some people some companies don't i mean some companies are so tightly knit that they may not need them because you right. grew up with you know right i mean a lot, a lot we do have a lot of new guys on the crew but I would say our, our core group of guys outside of our family have been with my father for about 25 years now. Um, so combined with my brother, so anyone who doesn't know us, it's my, my mother and father own the company. Um, my two brothers, there, there's four brothers all combined. Um, two of my brothers work with our, our company. So, I mean, we got a tight knit family that have been with the company for 25 plus years. Um, so when we talk about standard operating procedures, a lot of our, what we do is so cemented in our day-to-day -day operations. Um, you know, when someone comes on our crew, if we get a new guy, um, his first day, he knows what's up. You know, he knows that he's, I don't want to call us the big leads, but he knows that we need business. You know, a lot of times when we hire a new person, uh, the first question my dad asks is, are you, do you want a job or do you want a career? Because we want people that want to make this their career and we take this shit seriously um so a lot of our day-to-day -day operations are, are pretty much built in um and in the morning there's a lot of like flip-flopping around of who's going to go with what crew and stuff like that so in my brothers and my father we kind of all sit in the office in the morning and he kind of writes down a little game plan and it's like we're in we call it the war room you know and he's the general and we get our little list of guys and 
and depending on uh, which job we're going to, we got to make sure we got the right set of tools and, and things like that. So. so give me give me an idea here of what a morning would look like at American Pavement when you guys are first. Let's say there's a 200,000 square foot job that you guys have lined up that you guys are going out to pave. What does that look like from the time you wake up and when does that alarm ring? So, I mean, we're up at 5 a.m. We, we get to the shop around 6, 6.30. You know what's funny, John, is, is the big jobs seem to go smoother in the morning because everybody knows, like, if we got a job prepped and we got a thousand ton delay, that's what we're doing, you know? So the guys come in. Um, one of my cousins who works for us, he's the first guy at the shop every morning. He's there at 6 o'clock, and he gets the tool trucks fueled up, and, and that saves us tons of time. So kudos to him. He's, he's the first one there. He gets the tool trucks filled up. Our drivers normally come in a little bit earlier um, and they know that, you know, they want to wipe their truck down. We get tire shine on every tire, um, check your oil, check your fluids and uh, get your truck running. Let that puppy start up a little bit in the morning. Um, and then my laborers and the machine operators, you know, we kind of go in the, the tool trucks, clean up, make sure everything's tied down. You know, should chicken get loose on the way home and you could be going to a job 30 miles away. So they know they kind of got to tidy up their tool trucks, take out all the trash from the night before, uh, clean up the shop. Um, and it, my dad wants to see the guys moving in the morning. You know, we don't have the kind of shop that we come in and sit around and have coffee and wait for orders. Um, as soon as my guys get there around 615, 630, um, we want you moving. Uh, as far as me and my brothers and my father, um, we're in the office. And like I said, a big job, we kind of know what's going on. You know, we're all headed to probably the same place. Um, but the days that we have like two or three crews going, that's when there's a little bit of, um, you know, you're going here, you're going here, you're taking these guys here, you're taking truck six here. So those are the days that we're sitting in a circle. Um, and now this is at 5 a.m. or 6 a.m. in the morning. So <laughs> um, tensions are a little high in the morning, you know. But uh, my dad gives us directions and, and, and literally maps out on a paper like, you know, we have to do this on the job, this on the job. And, and, I, and we, we like knowing what exactly what we need to get done in the day because we kind of control the pace of the job, you know. So, um, so once we get our orders, boom, we head out and, and then we roll, you know. Go to the go to the, the so the drivers will head to the plants, start filling up a blacktop. They'll start right. moving favors you guys start to lay uh and that 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 day will go until you've done the job and in the case yeah. that you guys have something break down or so on i'm assuming you guys if, if something breaks during a job you guys have the ability to repair something on site or do you have to i guess it depends on the repair but tell us I mean, a little bit know, of it all it all depends where you're working i mean that's kind of the great part about working local a lot um you know if you're only couple miles from the shop you can go and grab that extra paver um, when we're laying a big job if we can we like to bring a backup paver just to have it um, but as far as an equipment breaks down um, we're, we're per, sort of mechanical you know we run a lot of the same equipment we've been running lee boys for 25 years now 30 years so if something breaks down we kind of know sort of how to fix it or at least fix it enough to finish the job uh, but um yeah, we, we, when we do a job, we come pretty strapped, you know, so at least bring two to three rollers, you know, even if there's an extra roller there, um, it's good to have backups, you know, we'll bring two skid steers to a job sometimes. And, and if, if one goes down, it's like, whatever, just put it to the side and we'll deal with that later. And we got another one right here. Um, so when we roll up to a job, we come pretty strapped and, uh, that's kind of my dad's mentality. He doesn't, he doesn't like to slow down at all. Right. Right. Right, I understand, and, and and that I think is it brings us in, leads us into um, raised on blacktop. So, tell us a bit, a little bit about about raised on blacktop, how it got started, why, and and where it really stemmed from. Where did this come from? I get chills when people ask me that because it, it just it's it's literally my life. It's a piece of me, um, and it's as as much as it grows, like it's my baby now, you know? Um, but I mean, Raised on Blacktop started from just going to work with my dad every day, you know? And, and I'd even more sense, more so say why I started it was I wanted, when I got on social media, I noticed there's a lot of kids like myself 
that have grown up in a paving business that um, even more so to dig deeper, like, you know, everybody in, in my town, like knows that my family does paving, knows I work on blacktop and, and I grew up paving. And in the summers, you know, when you're a kid, it's cute to go to work with your dad. But when you're 16, 17, 18 years old in the summer and your friends are going to the beach every weekend or on a Tuesday, and you're laying blacktop or even more so on a Saturday, I'm cleaning trucks at the shop. I don't really need to be there, but I am. Um, you know, this brand is for those kids that are putting in those extra work, extra hours on the weekend. Um, so that's kind of where it started. Um, I bought a heat press and a t-shirt press. And I was like, I need to make some t-shirts just for ourselves. I was sick of going down to print shops and saying, can't do this, can't do that. I was like, I'm going to start making these my own. So I started messing with some names. I put raised on blacktop on it. And I was like, this will be something that like me and my brothers can wear like on the weekends when we work or, or something, you know, that we go out, we can wear, wear raised on blacktop and I don't have to have American pavement plaster all over me. Cause you know, sometimes when you go out and you're like, I don't want to be wearing American pavement because everyone's asking for a job or a driveway. And I'm like, I just want to go out, you know? Um, but yeah. Uh, so it started about two years ago now which is crazy because of how far we've grown in two years. Um, but it started just by making t-shirts. I started with some, some hats. I would say anyone that wants to start a brand, you should start with some hats or some decals, things that you don't have to have 50 sizes of, you know, um, started in my room. I just started shipping it to guys over Instagram DM and then finally smartened up and knew I had to do this the right way. So I started like a Shopify account and, uh, started rolling started posting stuff and, and just really put it out there dude i i have watched it grow because we were building a brand very at the similar time and right. uh and and it it hit home for me tremendously more so with my son because my son was raised on blacktop you know right. i uh i put my you know i, I supported our, our family from the time i was 19 um you know sling and sealer and asphalt so it was, it was, uh, it hit home to me as well. You know, being a teen, a teen, a young dad, 18, 19, raising my, my guest who was just born and buying our first house and having asphalt essentially pay for the lifestyle that we were building, man. And, and it rang home big time. And as I was watching the brand grow, I would, you know, like, like your posts and see what you guys were doing. And, and I remember, I remember speaking with Brian about it, just being and Alex Lucic, and just being like, "Man, I just love it. It's an awesome brand. It rings home, and it's so genuine and pure, and it's yeah. real. Thank There's you. life, you know. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and and just a tremendous amount of experiences and memories that tie into it as well, right? It brings you back to your youth, and and it also yeah. gives that feeling of pride that you know that sure. it, you know." Being, be, being an asphalt specialist, contractor, business owner is not something that anybody needs to be embarrassed about. We can be proud to be raised yeah. on black. Yeah. And, and I, we have, I don't mean to cut you off. We have a slamming company. We got the best name in Danbury, but even growing up, I heard it. Are you going to work for your dad your whole life? You'd be like, and now I'm to an age where like, people are like, wow, you're still working with your family. That's awesome. You know, and I don't want kids from, like I said, it's cute to work with your dad when you're a kid and go when you're eight, nine years old. But like those kids from 15 to 20 years old that they don't want to work for their family's business because they don't think it's cool or they're worried about someone else thinks so or they want to do their own thing. Like, don't go work for someone that doesn't give a about you, you know, go. Yeah, go work for your dad and take over his business one year, one day or go work for your parents and learn the ins and outs of how to run a business. And then when you're of age, you can go run a business and, and actually know what to do, right? So that that advice for, for everybody who's watching that, where that home, do you take that advice? Because you this is living proof right here. And okay. and you know, and and don't be ashamed ever of of growing with your family. Ever. Right. right. I still hear it. I still hear it, John. I'm like, come on, are you kidding me? You know? Well, man, I, I gotta I gotta say I'm I'm stoked that you've been able to grow up with your dad and have your dad as a mentor and be able to actually have a family business, man. I I I gotta say that there's a lot of people that probably crave that 
more so than people who are embarrassed to actually have that. So that's true. That's true. And I got to give a lot of respect to my mom. I mean, growing up, you know, it was easy for my dad to take us to work in, you know, those conversations that I was talking about, like when you're 16, 17, and I'm like, you know, I'm going to work, of course. Um, but on the weekends, I'm like, mom, I, I, you know, I want to be going to the beach. I want to be going to these parties. And she's like, Maddie, stop feeling bad for yourself. You know, you, you need that tough love at that age. And, and she ran our business. Um, she was like, stop feeling bad for yourself. Because when you're 21, 22, and you're done with school, you're going to be five years ahead of these kids. And sure enough, that was the case, you know? Um, so, you know, those, those years, those teen years, don't be afraid to put in the work. It's, it's, it pays off big time. You're going to be so far ahead of the game. Okay, dude. So raised on blacktop is no longer just a hat. It's no longer just a t-shirt. It is a brand and it's, it's yeah. exploring. I, I've, I've, I've seen things happen in the last six months that I'm in awe about. I mean, it's, been on race cars and televised yeah and now there's something that's launched with lee boy i know how close you guys are with lee boy but tell us about about the race world and how raised on blacktop is now a part of that and can you tell us afterwards about this incredible raised on blacktop lee boy paver that i've seen everywhere uh yeah so I mean, just to run through the whole story again, how we met Spencer Boyd, who's the NASCAR Truck Series driver that uh, it was actually in Nashville the first time I talked to him. He wasn't there, but we got a message. Um, actually, let me rewind. We, we noticed this NASCAR driver started following us. So we um, kind of kept in touch. I, I hit him up and said, thank you for following us. Um, and I was like, you know, I want to send you some merch. You were raised on blacktop just like me. I mean, some of these NASCAR drivers were even more raised on blacktop. You know, they were been driving since they were four or five years old on car coats or go-karts. Um, so he's like, yeah, sure. I love it. And he actually started rocking it. And I was like, wow, he actually like, you know, this brand is, is, is sticks for him too. Um, so the last trade show we were at, we're sitting in the lobby and I get a, a message from Spencer and he's like, you know, it's uh, two weeks till Daytona. Um, I, I need a sponsor. I don't know if he lost his sponsor or what something fell through. And he's like, I got an opportunity. You can get in here swinging deal. Um, you know, what do you guys think? And, uh, this was new to all of us. You know, this is a dream of ours to sponsor NASCAR. And I was like, dad, check this out. You know, <laughs> what do you think? And, uh, he was like, Oh, I got to talk to your mother see what she, she, what she thinks. So we kind of like kicked the tires on it a couple of days and, uh, on our way back, um, we called him and I was like, all right, we'll do it. You know, we'll take the chance. You know, this is going to be great eyes. Um, the NASCAR community is already blue collar, you know, uh, in, in America pavement, we have like big goals and big operations, big aspirations. We want to really grow this brand one day. So why not do some NASCAR promotion, you know? Um, so we called him back and said, we'll do it. And he picked up a sponsor like the day before and we're like, ah. you know, so he was like, you can do the second race. It's in Las Vegas um lots of viewership so that's kind of how we started we did a, a race in las vegas and um kind of kept in touch with the nascar community that was another thing that i started pushing on our instagram obviously and trying to tap into that uh fan base um and you know th- those guys respect what we do big time you know uh, so fast forward the next year, um, we had our sights on Daytona. We wanted to do Daytona. It's the Super Bowl of, of NASCAR. Um, so we made sure we got that race and then we went down. It was probably one of the coolest things I've ever seen it live in person. Um, I've been there. We, got, we got to sw- sit in a, in a sweet box, like right behind the pit. Um, and just to see our truck going around the track, like, not only do you get chills the first time you see it, but every time it goes around, I just like, it was amazing, you know? And he, he, he raced his heart out. Um, he started in like 24th and uh, coming around the last turn, last lap, he was in seventh place and got T-boned by one of, uh, it was actually one of his teammates, I think. Uh, there was a big, big crash. He got caught in the crash and finished 13th, which is still really good. Um, in Daytona, as long as you finish, it's good, so. Um, right. He actually went across the finish line sideways right in front of us. And I swear when he did that, it was like silence, you know. Um, but uh, 
it was a great experience and, and we're looking to do it again. Dude, this, this, I, and I watched the whole thing. I watched you guys posting the videos. I watched him actually, actually get T-boned. I watched the whole thing happen and I was sitting there getting chills, man, because I can only imagine what it would have been like for you guys to experience something that you, you know, you, you curated, you, you incubated this, this, this right. idea you had from your bedroom that's not that far from you, I'm sure. And you were heat pressing these things on the late, you know, the brand on the t-shirts and the hats and you boxing it by hand and shipping it out, not because of the money, but because you actually wanted to spread what it is to feel like it, like right. being raised on blacktop and, and to then have to be in Daytona and having this car going around the track. And then, and then from there, just being able to, just being able to share the story, right? This, this journey, this memory with people that, you know, and just the audience that's listening to this and, and, you know, having this come back to the heart of not being embarrassed of where you come from. Yeah. Right. And where they can take it, right. Where you can take it, man. And, and, and don't, don't settle. It's about progress. It's about constructive, you know, building towards, uh, towards the future and helping people yeah, and sharing you know, it. Cool is like when we were last time we were in Vegas at the Con Expo, I met a kid, I won't say his name. Um, he was from Connecticut. He was a paver. And I could tell like he was with his dad. I could tell he worked for the business, but like he wasn't really like so into it. And I remember like telling him about Raised on Blacktop and showing him the truck and like seeing his reaction. And like he showed his dad, he's like, wow, look at this. This is a paving company. And their sponsor NASCAR. And like now the kid like, He's so into what they do and like he posts on social media constantly. And like I could see like his sense of pride kind of like put a little fire in his ass, I want to say, you know, so like just seeing that effect and like I don't need to say anything and he doesn't need to say anything, but it's kind of just understood. And it, it's just cool to see, you know, see it positively. Understood. Yeah, yeah, I love that. It's brilliant. So Tell us about the Lee Boy deal that you've done. So you, you Lee Boy, there's a paver with raised on blacktop on it now as well. And it's badass. It's the freaking right. coolest looking paver. I think it's the it's the meanest, coolest paver that I think I've ever seen. Tell us about that, man. Yeah. So um, there's actually more than there's there's 20 of them sold now. 20 raised on blacktop pavers and, and they're still selling. Um, but uh yeah, Lee Boy raised on blacktop. I mean, they go hand in hand together. Um, things like this happen from us being good customers of Lee Boy for over 30 years in, um, you know, American pavement. We're like a manufacturer's dream. Like, not only do we keep our equipment in tip top shape, but we take pride in what we do. Um, and we carry ourselves in a, in a respectable manner. I think a lot of people don't realize, like, you know, on social media, people hate on our social media a lot. And I'm not the one that dip down and like throw some salt back, you know, you really got to like carry yourself well, if you want things like this to happen. Um, just like an athlete getting an endorsement deal that comes from what they do on the field and off the field. Um, so yeah, I mean, raised on blacktop was like the perfect storm for Lee boy. Um, it started out, it was just going to be one machine. Um, but as soon as the marketing department got word of it, they're like, this could be something a lot bigger. And, uh, and we're doing really well with it. It's um, they've, they've did a whole marketing um, plan all winter. Um, we were actually supposed to debut it in Nashville, which sucks that it uh, didn't happen. Um, but we were finally able to go down to North Carolina. We got to tour the facility and we saw the first one come off the assembly line, which is like crazy. That was like up there with, I was up there with the NASCAR thing, you know? Um, but yeah, there's, you can order one with your dealer. You can go to your local dealer. And um, we wanted with this paver, we wanted to do more than just a paint scheme. That's what they've done in the past. With these special editions. It's been like, excuse me. They've done like uh, a pink paver for breast cancer and they raised a bunch of money and did a foundation thing. And then they did like a, a essential workers they did an american flag theme and they did a red paver so they were like let's do something for the family-owned businesses and who better to do it with than raised on blacktop um, so we were like we want to do more than just a paint scheme because i know this is going to grow into something bigger 
And it can't just be a paint scheme. If this is going to be the, for the family companies, for the guys like you and me, it needs to be more. So what we did, we did a whole tool carrying kit on this machine. So there's like special steps on this machine that you could slide your rake in and, it, and it's going to stay there rather than have these rakes on the step and be falling off and getting pinched in pinch spots. Uh, there's shovel holders where you can stick the shovels in. Uh, there's a whole updated lighting package. So these are all things that we've always wanted to see on a paver. And it was really cool with Lee Boy that they like really listened to us. Um, and a lot of these recommendations that we put forth, they put on the machine and not to mention the badass paint scheme. So, um, yeah, the seat too. The seats are cool, man. Super badass, yeah. 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 Well, listen, man, I appreciate you taking the time. I know that, you know, it's late and you've been working your ass off probably since five o'clock. It's almost nine o'clock now, PM. And I know that your hands are probably still, uh, still showing work signs. There you go. Oh, wow. uh, I'm sure, I'm sure you did, but they're, they're just, they're just permanently stained because you're raised on blacktop. So, um, yeah, I get it. Love the calluses. Right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Listen, man, I appreciate you. Proud to be raised on, on Blacktop. And dude, I cannot say enough about you guys, your company, just the morals, the ethics, just a, just an all around incredible family, man. And you're, you're a great example for people who are really looking to, you know, build a great brand with a lot of positivity around it, man. Thank you so much for what you do for the industry and, and keep paying it forward, brother. We really Thank appreciate you. it. You know, a, a lot of my inspiration too came from like when I saw you at the trade shows and you're pushing these Rhino Works crack fillers. And I'm like, do you remember me asking you like, how do you get to that decision with a manufacturer? You know, yeah. and, and we talked about it. Um, yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And I appreciate what you do for the asphalt community. It's, it's really good. Um, anyone that's looking for a raised on blacktop paver, um, if you're, it's, it's specific to the 8520B line. So if you're in the market for 8520B, um, this package is not more, not much ex more expensive. Um, so if you're in the market for 8520B, you might as well contact your dealer and order one. Exactly. And raisedonblacktop.com, you can order any kind of uh, clothing or t-shirts, correct? Uh, yeah, raisedonblacktop.com, we have anything from hats, decals, onesies for your kids. Um, mm -hmm. We're coming out with a kid's line any, any day now. I'm waiting on a package. And a lot of new products. So check it out. Join the movement. Absolutely join the movement, certainly. Um, follow you at American Pavement on Instagram. At, American as well. Pavement, at Raised on Blacktop. Punch it in anywhere. We'll pop up. Cool, brother. Thank you so much for all the shares, man. Have a beautiful week. I know you probably have a bunch of work ahead because, again, right. you guys have been raised on Blacktop the right way. Let's do this, brother. Thanks, John. Appreciate you, Matt. See you, bud.